Hello and welcome to Government Unit 5, pages 12 through 13. Uh, tyranny! We're talking all about tyranny! And there's three reasons we're gonna, why tyrannies get set up, how they get started, that we're gonna cover. It's not just one reason. Um, now all three reasons may not always be in, uh, in play for any tyranny that takes over, but at least one or more can be. So the reasons are external pressures, military power, discontent with democracy. Now what are those? Starting with military strength. When one or a few people have the military on their side, they don't need popular support, um, they don't need they don't, and no other countries um, involved, they just take the military, they get them on their side, and they just take over. This happened in Russia in 1917 when they overthrew the Tsar, which is the Russian word for king, um, and China, Mao Zedong, developed the first Chinese communist nation, and they're still communist to this day. Um, he also had the ability to submit, force people to submit to his authority through the military. He had a lot of people that supported him. So did Lenin. And those who didn't, they crushed because they had the military completely on their side. External pressure. Now, that's kind of more internal pressure. External means comes from the outside. So in Russia, after Lenin died, Stalin took over. Um, Joseph Stalin was his name. And he, having already had full power over his country, wanted to spread his government, his style of government, to other countries as a buffer to protect himself from enemy nations, mostly Western Europea, Western European, and America. So he used his military power to go outside of his country and apply external pressure on countries like Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, um, to go communist and owe allegiance to him so that they could use them as like a shield in case the West ever attacked Russia. Um, and um, they're not the only ones who did that. Not trying to paint the communists as the only people who've done things like this. America has also done things like this. Uh, we're trying to fight communism. We want, we have, our country and its past has done everything it can to try to stop uh, communism. And it's called containment. We'll talk about that word in another video. Um, so we got proactive. Nicaragua, bloody, violent, some the Somoza family dictatorship, um, dominant controlled Nicaragua because we supported them. We helped them keep Nicaragua under their control because we were afraid that if we didn't keep him in control, who was the this, this Somoza family that was friends with America, uh, the people might choose, no guarantee, but they might choose a communist um, country, a communist government. And we were afraid that if they were a communist government, they would naturally be our enemies. Same thing in Guatemala. We were so afraid that they might go communist that uh, they might take resources and have it completely controlled by the government who then might decide not to sell to us. Um, and because at that time, in 1954, recently, the United Fruit Company had bought land there to grow and develop fruit and sell it back to America and make profit, we wanted to protect those interests, So we were afraid, and we were afraid communism would go against those interests, so we again supported a dictatorship and actually destroyed a democratic nation in order to put a dictatorship into place. Not just supported, but actually created the dictatorship ourselves. Discontent with democracy. Germany in 1918 was a democratic nation, full electoral power, and they were failing. People were poor, starving, uneducated, after World War I, the country was just in ruins. And in 1932, they knew Hitler was crazy, and they welcomed him in anyway, because he instilled in them a national pride. Um, that's what we're talking about nationalism easy, um, earlier. He made people, instead of feeling depressed about what had happened in World War I, they felt good about being Germans, and he built them up into a world power. And Again, they knew he was crazy. He had released a book years earlier saying that, that just totally revealed what kind of crazy he was cooking. His feelings about minorities, his feelings about anybody that's not blonde hair and blue eyes, even though he wasn't blonde hair and blue eyes. Obviously, people knew this. The Germans were not stupid people, but they were so desperate. 
or um, hope of having um, their old glory back, of not having to be um, so down and depressed and um, with a weak economy and lack of jobs, that they're willing to take anybody at all to get them out of that slump, to get them out of that depression, no matter how terrible that cost might potentially be. Now, maybe they didn't know how far Hitler was going to take it, but they knew what his feelings were, and they accepted it because they're that desperate. Uh, George Washington, he is an example of someone who had military power, had popular support, and in two different op had two different opportunities to, ha to have made himself king. He could have. He had the military because he was the leader of the military. He didn't have to convince them. He was appointed leader of the military, and he was extremely popular. And there was a couple points where America was on the brink of chaos, and he could have just said, stop. No more president crap. I'm taking over, and I'll tell you how it's going to be. But he didn't. He resisted that temptation and instead brought founding fathers together, supported them to build the country, build the constitution that we have today. No more Edmodo, right? One good question about anything at all you saw or heard, and check with me before you go on to the next video. See you.